Good afternoon and welcome to Your Town. I'm Thomas Sid, your host. Uh, today we're going to take a little bit, uh, kind of left turn off and uh, step into the area of improv. Uh, today my guest is Rich Westbrook of uh, the uh, Monter Monterey County, excuse me, Monterey Comedy Improv. Yes. That's one long word. <laughs> you know, three words, but <laughs> it's good to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you. All right. So I grew up with Second City in Chicago, and I would go and I would see, I saw Belushi and I saw some of the wow. other people. I, I didn't see Colbert because I was long gone. So my impression, you know, impression of, of improv is one thing. It's kind of a shrine. But it, tell us about what is improv for you? What is it? Where did it begin? <sighs> improv so for me started about eight years ago. Yeah. I saw a tryout or audition that they were having locally here. A guy named Jerry Orton was a director, and he just posted some sign <laughs> about an improv class. I thought, yeah. well, I think I can try that. Tried it out, and it's been just fantastic. No, but your day job wasn't my anywhere My day related. job, no, my, this is my evening job. Is My evening passion is improv. By, and <laughs> by the day, uh, during the day, I'm a chiropractor with my okay. wife. All we right. have a chiropractic office. You don't do much improv with, with the, your professional D practice. Well, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty straightforward. You about. don't tell your patients what you're really doing at night. Some of them know. Yeah, some of them are big fans. Some of them take my improv classes. Well, improv can be very physical. Do you ever have any oh, participants yeah. that end up as patients? Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is very physical. Definitely. Okay. It's great so for the mind, you just, body. Did you come from, from a school where you had theater in your background? No. Because I, that's a big leap to just no, jump I in. I grew up thinking theater was weird. In high school, I thought, well, what are those what are those kids doing? Who would ever want to be on where stage? Where did you grow up? This is Arroyo Grande, okay. say, um, Southern California, or yeah. Central, the Central Coast, the other Central Coast. And I was more of an athlete. And I thought theater was no way I would ever do that. It just seemed strange to me that people would do that. Well, everyone thought in my high school that, that the jocks got all the girls. And, well, the guys, the guys in theater did. I was down in the orchestra pit watching. <laughs> You're watching the whole, whole I was watching play the, and yeah, fold. watching the whole <laughs> twist and turn thing going yeah. on. So you just decided, oh, what the heck? Yeah. So uh, then try I, something different. Well, then I got into Toastmasters, which is public speaking, right. about 25 years ago. So I've been doing that ever since. And in Toastmasters, they have a section called Table Topics, where they'll ask you a random question, and you have one to two minutes to answer it. And that really is improv. You're improvising your response, your mm -hmm. presentation, right. your delivery, everything. And I just love that section of Toastmasters. And then watching improv on TV, whose line is it anyway, primarily, sure. I thought, I think I can do that. I'm going to give that a shot. So you were inspired by Drew Carey? Yes, Drew Carey. Well, he's not the best improviser, but the guys that are improvising, Ryan and, and Colin, and sure. uh, yeah, those guys are amazing. Wow. Incredible. That's fantastic. So you, you joined this group, and you were a founding member in that group in 2008. Yes. And now you're in charge. Yes. So right. what's, what's it like to be in charge of an event that has no structure, or it doesn't? <laughs> well, the irony is that it, it's highly structured. It's, you have a lot of structure, which creates the freedom and the spontaneity. Because the structure is, the, it, what is it, the buy-in? Well, it's, give an example. Let's say we do a game. So you and I, we're in a scene. Right. And they say, okay, give me a location. They say, uh, you're the Monterey Wharf. And our structure is we can only ask questions. So I can never, say, make a statement. So that creates a structure, confines what you can do. But in that structure, funny and entertaining things happen. Or if we're in the same scene, you can use, you just can't use any words with the letter S in it. And that's difficult. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> and so it creates the natural humor with the, with the rules, if you will. Well, you mentioned uh, when we were talking earlier about some of the people that started off in improv. You know, Belushi, Aykroy, Bill Murray, Gilda Radner, Mike Myers, Tina Fey. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Oh, yeah. How much do you influence of the improv, you're being into it now, do you see transcends for, for those people that didn't go on to become actors, where they're working from scripts? Largely. It's, it's huge. The improv yeah. still comes through, and you can see it in some of their performances. On right. Film. When you look at the beginnings of improv, it was a woman by the name of Viola Spolin in the mid to late 50s. She was a renowned teacher, drama teacher, and she wanted to get her actors to be more in the present. Okay. So she developed a whole series of these games, she called them theater games, to get people to be in the moment, not be thinking about their lines and not have all these other concerns, but just truly to be in response to what was going on mm. in the scene. So she created a bunch of unusual games, theater games. And then from there, they thought, oh, well, those are actually quite entertaining. 
And so that became a technique, a coaching technique for actors. So improv is very much uh, used in much of acting classes and teaching. Well, that sort of translates a little bit back into my experience as a musician. I was classically trained, I was getting bored, and my teacher handed me a saxophone and introduced me to jazz that my dad had been playing around the house for years. And studying the chord structures and listening to those, you know, all those albums and, and taking these lessons and joining bands, there's sort of a background to it, but taking that leap into improv, for me, it was much easier than having to sit third chair and, uh, and be playing clarinet anymore. I mean, it was a very liberating experience. Right. Do you get that feeling in improv that it's, that it's a complete, it, it's a real moment when somebody suggests something in the audience and then you just run with it? Oh, it's You don't know where it's going to go. It's a complete rush because when I've done scripted plays and theater plays, it's, you know, you're studying the same script for three months. Yeah. The words don't change. It's over and over and over. And I enjoy being on stage, but it was clearly very confining. But with improv, you get to be the, the writer, the director, and the actor all at the same time, mm -hmm. and it's you have ten, <laughs> five seconds to start. So, so it's a rush. There was a teacher that obviously introduced this to actors to get them to loosen up. Yes. With your group, and you've got new people coming in, how do you train them, or do you train them? Do they come bringing theater experience, or some do? Somebody new to the group. Yeah, some people have that background. Other people just they've never done any theater, but everybody can do improv. It they just, just they don't just, believe it. They just need the coaching and the, and the practice and the technique and the skill sets. So what are the, what are the skills that are important to be good at improv? The skills are the ability to not have a bunch of social filters when you're interacting with another <laughs> player. Because we have so many filters that hold us back and inhibit our movements, what we say, what we think. Improv is about breaking those down and truly being in that moment. Okay. and connecting in a way that's very real. Because humans by nature, we're just funny. We just do weird, unusual, funny things. And so we or improv, we suppress them on a daily basis. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so improv just removes those filters. You can yeah. just be a better version of yourself, the best version of yourself. So yourself. You get somebody that, that can come in and accept those, those you know, lack of boundaries. Uh, if they accept those, then what you're saying is basically anybody can do this. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And I've seen people that I, I thought had no hope <laughs> in improv, and they're actually in the troupe now. And well, isn't that a well. little bit like being childlike? Is, is we say, gee, we don't oh. want to grow up. Let's stay kids, where kids don't have those boundaries yeah. yet? The best improvisers are yeah. kids, because that's all they do all day, right? When you were a kid, did you ever go play Cowboys and Indians or Batman and Robin? You just make up games, yeah. and you're completely immersed into it, in it, and it's real to you in the moment. So yeah. when we're on stage, what we're doing is real. To us, it's, we are actually in that. We are that character we just created. Well, let's take a look at uh, your group here. Let's bring up this first photo, see what we got here. <laughs> You're in the moment here. In the moment, She's definitely yes. In the moment. I have no idea what inspired that, but I can tell you that is Maria Dawson. She's the training coordinator. She's the other original member. Okay. In fact, she, to give you more of a history, Jerry Orton started the Women of Whimsy. He has a troupe in Tahoe that he's been doing for 20 plus years. So he came down to the peninsula and he put together a troupe and only women showed up. And so it was just a women's group called the Women of Whimsy. And so Maria was one of the original members of the Women of Whimsy. But she did improv before that. Okay. So she's my training coordinator. All right. Now you, including yourself, you're, you're a band of 10? We are a band of merry makers of 10, yes. Is, that, is there something magical about that number or is no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no, it's but, just, it just made up on the spot. Let's go. Yeah, uh, it's it's fluctuated. We've had as low as four members, and right now ten is the highest. Okay. And it's harder with more people because people need one-on-one -on -one time. Sure. So it's taking more time to train the members we have. Right. But with more with that many people, you have ten different personalities. And as you can see on this picture here, everybody has their own unique personality and style. You can see it in their faces. Oh, and, yeah. And just their, their body language. Like Nick, the guy in the purple shirt, he's yeah. just like, he's so outgoing and out there. He's yeah. really gregarious and big. But, you know, go down the bottom of the stairs, a guy standing next to the woman yeah. next to me, that's D Dave. And he's really witty. But he's really controlled and witty and he's more cerebral. So you get all these different personalities. We play off one another 
and crazy magical moments happen. So as the professional background for that group, you've got nine people. Right. We understand your profession. Where else, what other things do they do? What's their <laughs> what day they job? Do? <laughs> wow. Do they do anything? Or do they just watch themselves? They actually, some videos? of them have jobs. <laughs> some of them do have jobs. Some are retired, okay. yeah. We have a financial advisor. He was a lawyer. We have a couple of tech people. Rhonda Navarro is a property manager. My training coordinator, Maria, she teaches drama and elementary level. Okay. So we all have different so backgrounds. It's a real mix. Yeah, yeah. It's a real mix. How do you get people to join the group? Do you just, you know, you have a casting call or how does No, it work? what I do is I have an ongoing drop in class every Wednesday night in my office. Yeah. I'll plug it, 205 Montecito Avenue, Monterey. And we have a drop in class, it's available open to anyone and it's from 6.30 to 7.30. Is there an approval rejection process? No, everybody no gets, one, anybody no can do the drop-in class. Yeah. You can't boot them out saying, you can't, thanks for coming. <laughs> you can't fail that. <laughs> but we, you, it's, it's not like a screen test or an audition no. call. No, because this is open to anyone. Yeah. And, and that's what we do, we embrace failure. We fail forward. And whenever we <laughs> fail, everybody goes, ah, and they just make a sound, funny little sound and we, or, we applaud it. Or if you fail, sometimes we'll say, um, I'm so sexy. <laughs> so we just we really encourage that because that that shows that we're trying. You're what an doing amazing of course if this were if this were a college course is you can't fail. It doesn't cost anything to join, <laughs> and people will pay you compliments and call you sexy if you screw up. Exactly. <laughs> it should be a course. And there's no final exam. No, not at all. God, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. And you don't have to get a building permit to do it either. Not that you don't I have know. to get permission <laughs> to drop your boundaries. Right. But the there's also that's the dropping class for anyone. Okay. And right after right after that, five minutes later, we go into an advanced class. So you have to be approved to get into that class. So there's a series of classes there's that may series. come for the first night and if somebody really Many kills nights, it, they actually. <laughs> stick around. Yes. Yeah. They'll get to a point where they go, Well, can I do the advanced class? And usually I'll say, Yeah, you've you've done this enough and we can okay. go to the next step. And everyone comes in clean and sober and yeah, leaves their boundaries exactly. at the door and it just takes off from there. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's, it, sounds, it gets it wild. Sounds, it, does, it, <laughs> sounds, it sounds easy, but it's tougher, I think, than what, what uh, one would expect. Yes. Well, if we carry around that backpack of boundaries all the time. Right. Which yeah. I've got about a 50 pound pack as an architect. <laughs> That's it? Just 50? You're yeah. Doing, you're doing well. <laughs> yeah, only 50 pounds. I, I leave it in the office and then head straight to the bourbon. You know, the, 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 there's, there's my improv. Is it on the rocks or is it straight to the bourbon? You know, that's what we do. Well, let's take a couple more images here. This is sure. pretty cool. <laughs> um, lap surfing, yes. Lap surfing. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> And the girls obviously enjoying this. And the fellow off the right, this is Mr. Gregarious. He's been that's the guy that's been the troop quite a long time. The which guy? The guy that, no, that's Keith. He's been there for a long time. He's yeah. been there for about five years. He's a familiar face around town. I can't I can't think of what he does. Maybe he doesn't have a job. That's why we see him. I, so I don't think he has a job actually. <laughs> but he has he works. I don't know exactly. It's mysterious what Keith does. We don't really don't know what Keith does. Well, he's looking at the camera in this shot going, I don't know, when mm. am I, is this what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life? Right. Yeah, so that was us preparing at the Wharf Theater. So how long do people stay in this troupe? Well, is there like a, a burnout phase after? Or you don't expire. I mean, you, some people just move membership on. Membership for life. <laughs> membership for life, yes. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they're still having fun and entertaining. Okay. That's it. So you have people that have been in the group a couple, three years, and they pretty much yeah. stick with it? Yes, yes. We have people, like I said, Maria's been there the whole time. Yeah. Keith's been maybe five or six. Carrie's been there for six years. And we have a group of new p members who've been there for less than a year. Okay. And so they're the, they're the new ones, the, uh, <laughs> the young ones. <laughs> well, if, if uh, you were talking to a, a group of young students today and they were asking questions about theater and the, the uh, subject of improv came up, what, what what words of wisdom wisdom would you impart to a, a group if they ask a question like, well, what about improv? What do you say to them? Because they're they're young, right? Yeah, or do it. I mean, they're closer to being a child, so they're naturally better at improv. So it's it's tougher as you get older. Oh, it's much tougher. As we get older, so we are less likely to change our thought process and how we react to mm -hmm. the environment. Yeah. So it really is going back in time. A lot of the classes I'm trying to bring people back to when they were childlike being able to have a spontaneous reaction or response. And you can see it in someone's eyes, whether they're really in the moment or they're just thinking about, well, maybe is this okay to do this? So it's breaking down those walls. Jeez, I gotta be careful. You're, 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 I'm having flashbacks of 
Not stupid. Patrick's, that's the bourbon. Things, that's the, no, it's pre-bourbon. Pre I was like nine and, and driving teachers crazy in, in school. And, you know, the gift of a short attention span with a willing accomplice in, in your second grade class that you do something <laughs> funny and then he can't stop laughing. It's, there's your audience right there. Right. right. Now, how does music tie into this? Is there, is there a musical component or is it is it yes. all verbal? Is no, no, we do have bits that are based on music. Okay. So we'll have one, for instance, called Serenade. We'll take an audience member, come down, sit down on the chair, and I'll ask them a series of questions. Oh, tell me about you. you know, what's your name? What do you do for a living? Anybody special in your life? How would they describe you? So I'm getting background information on that person. Then to the women, typically, we'll, but usually it's a, a man that'll volunteer. And the women players will come stand next to him and they'll play this ballad type music and they're singing a song to them, right? Made up right on the spot based on what I just got from them, their history. And usually it's one word at a time and then we'll get into a chorus. So it's very entertaining. Susie is a nurse. She lives in the woods. Yes. She carries a big purse. <laughs> Whatever she's going to do. Whatever comes up, yeah. So anything they say can, can and will be used against oh, them. Oh, guaranteed it will be used. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, it's a blast. So if people want to come to performance, tell us real quick with the minute we have left where they can find out about you and how they can yes. see a performance. The best way to find out about our shows is to go to our website, which is MontereyComedyImprov.com. Okay. That has a page on there where it lists our shows. The next show is going to be August 19th at 7.30 at the Wharf Theater. Okay. And it's our third show there, and those are going really well. All right. Yeah. And you also do work over at the Carl Cherry Center? Yes. You've done work over there? Yes. Good. Yes. Well, this we'll is go to your house. You know, We'll do public events. Oh, you do, you do if you, site specific? If you get 20 people together, I'll we'll go over there for okay. a small fee. This is not <laughs> improv, but I threw in an idea to a friend, and I'll, I'll be real quick with this. But uh, this year, uh, across the country, as an architect, I read about this stuff. Frank Lloyd Wright turned 150 years ago, or was born 150 years ago. Okay. So there's exhibits around the country, and I'm watching this last night, and I'm fortunate enough I live in a house that was designed by a guy that worked for one of Frank Lloyd Wright's apprentices, and it looks like a Frank Lloyd Wright house. So I was talking to my partner, Kimberly, last night, and I said, we haven't had a big party here. Let's do a Frank Lloyd Wright party and put it in this house. And right. the only condition is is that they have to come and have something somehow tied to Frank Lloyd Wright. So I imagine guests showing up in capes and pork pie hats and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know if that's really an improv because we're kind of tipping them off in advance. All right. <laughs> but uh, maybe if I need to, I need to expand the uh, the audience, I may give you a call. Exactly. This has been really fun, Rich. Appreciate you coming by hey. today. Nice and, talking uh, to you. And I've got to come down here. You've been watching Your Town. Thanks so much for joining us. So,